Okay, I want to uh, review this slide. I left it up there at the end of the last presentation uh, for you to practice figuring out some sentences for these diagrams. And I want to compare this slide to um, uh, bleh, this slide a little bit as well. This one here that we did earlier on. Okay, so first of all, uh, just to review on um, the first diagram, uh, we can say here that the environment is hypertonic compared to the cell. Since all the water is exiting the cell, uh, there must be more solutes on the outside of the cell. So the environment is hypertonic on the first picture uh, compared to the cell, or you can say the cell is hypotonic to the environment. That's the first one. For the middle diagram, there is an equal number of arrows going in and out. Um, and so we that would be a situation where we could say the environment is isotonic to the cell or the cell is isotonic to the environment, they're the same. And then on the, the third diagram on the top right, uh, this one we would say, we look at it and see that water is going in, more, more water is going in than coming out. So here we can say that the cell is hypertonic, more concentrated compared to the environment. Or we can say the environment is hypo constant, hypotonic compared to the cell for those examples. Now, let's um, talk about the, the these are anim, these are plant cells in this diagram diagram. And on the previous slide, they were animal cells. And there's a difference between animal cells and plants, many differences, but one of the main differences is that Plant cells have a wall around them and animal cells do not. Now let's backtrack again. Both cells have a, have a membrane. So actually any cell has a membrane. A membrane is like a fluid, like a very floppy baggy, like a plastic baggy. And then inside of that baggy is all the stuff of the cell and then the outside is the environment. So every cell, whether you're a plant cell, an animal cell or a bacterial cell, all those kinds of cells have a membrane. If you're an animal cell, that's all you have. You just have a baggie around you. But if you are a plant cell, you have an extra layer around the baggie, which is the wall. So you can think of an animal cell as a balloon, just a balloon. And the balloon, the, the, the rubber of the balloon is, is, the, uh, is the membrane. And you can think of a plant cell as a balloon inside of a shoebox. So there's an extra box around there. All right, so let's take my, um, my animal cell, my balloon. I can put stuff in that balloon and it can expand, 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 expand. And eventually that balloon is going to burst like the, uh, the chest tube on the far right here the the animal cell has taken on too much water it's expanded too much eventually that cell membrane just can't stretch anymore and it's just gonna rupture and the word we use for that is lice l-y-s-e lice or lice means bursting breaking or splitting and so this is an example where the cell has lysed because it's over expanded and taken on too much water like a balloon over inflating now if we go to the um plant cells here. If you can imagine taking that balloon and putting it inside a shoebox that's all sealed up and then somehow figuring out how to blow up the balloon inside the shoebox. Imagine you could do that. You could blow the balloon up and it would expand, expand, expand until the balloon was pushing against the walls of the shoebox and it would push all the sides and the top and everything but the shoebox would stop it from over expanding and the, it would get all hard and push it against there but it could not it could not burst and that's the situation we have here in the top right picture you can see the cell is kind of plumped up um, and the contents of the cell are pushed out against the walls but the cell isn't going to burst plant cells don't lice they can take up water until they're fully full of water and they're push the membrane is plastered up against the the cell wall like that balloon pushing against the shoebox 
but uh, the, the wall will protect the cell from bursting. And this is actually how plant cells like to be. They like to be full of water and all expanded like this. And that's how cells, plants, manage to stand up. When, they, when you water them, they get full of water and the cells go all nice and hard and inflated with water and the plant, his, his leaves are up. And if water starts to, the plant starts to lose water, the, the cells get a bit more kind of wibbly and the, the cell wall stays in place, but the uh, membrane starts to shrink back as the water exits the cell. And you can see that in the top left picture on this diagram. Uh, up there in the corner, uh, you can see how the, the membrane has shrunk away from the wall. The wall is still in place, but the balloon has shriveled up inside there. And then if that happens to the plant, then it starts to wilt. That's why plants wilt. They're, they're, um, the cells aren't nice and, and hard and full of water. And so the whole thing, plant doesn't have bones in it to hold it up. So it just kind of flops over. Um, so that's the difference. One of the, one of the main differences between animals and plant cells in terms of water uptake and, and, and how it's important and how the cells behave. Um, plant cells will not lice in a hypotonic environment, but animal cells will lice if they're bathed in a hypotonic environment. All right.